In this video, I'll share everything you need to know about arguably the most ubiquitous entry-level fountain pen on planet Earth, the Safari by Lamy. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learn along the way. There are quite a lot of things to know about the Lamy Safari line of pens, so right off the bat, there are section timestamps in the description below, so feel free to hop around as you see fit. Unboxing any Lamy Safari is a minimalistic and simple process. All Safaris come in the exact same packaging, this thin graphite-colored, textured cardboard box with cutout slots split down the middle of the box's fold lines, allowing you to catch a glimpse of the color of the pen inside. Pop open either side and out slides the pen, anchored to a thin graphite cardboard slip that keeps the pen anchored in transit, preventing it from rattling around in the box. Let's break down this pen and examine its anatomy and its design features. Each Safari comes with a standard blue ink cartridge, so you're ready to use it ASAP, but in order to prevent the cartridge from being kind of punctured, this cardboard ring keeps the barrel spaced apart. So first things first, we have the barrel, which features the Lamy logo wordmark on one side of the barrel and an ink level window on both sides. Next, you can see the cartridge, which we'll kind of set aside for now and throw away that cardboard spacer ring. Pulling at both ends will separate the cap from the grip. The cap has a convenient and easy to anchor clip and setting that aside, we're left with the grip in hand. The grip has a lot going on, both in design and beneath the surface. Right up top, there's a gasket that marries the barrel when capped to keep any chance of ink leakage away. Lamy Safari grips themselves are designed with this triangular surface that seats so nicely in hand with a standard writer's grip. Beneath the surface is the ink channel and feed, this black plastic part that extends from inside the grip to its tapered wings where the nib, ultimately the writing point, is sat. Now, before setting up the pen for the first time, I thought it'd be valuable to share the difference between smooth and textured barrels. We just pulled apart the black, smooth-barreled Safari, so I think it's best to compare with the textured barrel version of the same color. Fast forwarding through the unbox and laying them side by side, I'll break out the macro lens so we can take a closer look. Both are Lamy Safaris, both are black, but you can see how one is smooth and glossy, and the other has this matte, textured finish. Zooming back out, we can see that there are two other differences. The smooth version's clip and nib are silver, while the textured version's clip and nib are both black. Now, I've owned multiples of both, and from my own personal experience, clocking in hundreds and hundreds of hours of use, there is zero difference in the writing experience between the silver and black nib of the same nib size. Ultimately, it's about your own personal preference in terms of appearance. Me personally, I prefer the textured matte finish more than the shiny glossy one, so with my current everyday use setup, I have both of last year's 2021 Special Edition colorways anchored to my notebook. Both of them were only available in the textured matte finish. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be giving away both of these black Lamy Safaris, so stick around for the whole video to see how to enter. Setting up the cartridge for your first use is super simple. There are two ways. The first is to line up the cartridge with no pressure against the grip, then screw the barrel on. Partway through screwing it on, you'll feel a bit of resistance. Now give it a little extra twist action to push through, and essentially what's happening is the barrel being threaded on compresses the sealed cartridge into the grip's ink channel pin, puncturing it and allowing the ink to flow down the channel. The second way, also known as the fun way, is to line up the cartridge against the grip and use your thumb or finger to push down forcefully to puncture the cartridge seal, syringe style. Then screw the barrel on and you're all done. All that's left is to stand the pen up with the nib down to let gravity do its thing and let the ink make its way down the ink channel and enable the feed to run its capillary action to get the ink down to the nib. Me, I just put the pens in a cup and let them sit for a minute or two. Before showing you all the standard nib sizes and the ways they write, I thought I'd kind of take a moment to show how to replace or change nibs since I just so happen to want to do it. I want to change the fine nib that's currently on my Terra red pen to the medium nib on my white one. It's super easy to do, and all you need is regular old scotch tape. Now, I'm going to glove up because for some reason I can do the most mundane thing day to day with no issues, but the moment I try to film it, something wrong inevitably happens. <laughs> but basically, take a piece of scotch tape, about 2 inches long, affix it against the flat side of the nib you want to remove, 
Press it tightly so it stays on there, and then pull both slightly downwards and away and it'll slip right off. That's the silver medium nib, and I'll do the exact same thing with the black fine sized nib, and as you can see, there's no difference in the nib removal process with either colored nib. To put a nib onto a pen is even easier, just line up and firmly push with the fingers right up the wings to the edge of the grip. So let's jump over with testing the writing experience of all four standard nib sizes. There are three additional nib options intended for calligraphers, and since I'm definitely not a calligrapher, and I imagine neither are most of you, I won't be testing them out. But just so you know, they are indeed available, and those italicized nibs come in three widths, and you can pick up these nibs individually almost anywhere that sells Lamy Safaris. On my Savannah Green is the extra fine nib. As you know, this white Safari is now sporting the fine nib we just swapped from the Terra Red Pen. This black one is sporting the medium nib, and just in case any of you were interested in the slightly upgraded aluminum Lamy All-Star, I've tucked a broad nib onto it. Again, the Lamy All-Star, for all intents and purposes, is the same looking and feeling as a Safari, but instead of the plastic construction, it's made of aluminum. Now one very counterintuitive thing though is that because aluminum is such a soft metal, the All-Star actually dents and scratches easier than the plastic Safaris, and since I don't baby my pens at all, I just stick with the Safari for greater aesthetic durability while simultaneously being slightly cheaper. But anyways, let's take a look. I'll fast forward through this and just write hello in cursive with all four and print the alphabet with them as well. You can be the judge of the thickness of each pen's line work, but something that's kind of probably more valuable to you is the actual writing experience and tactile feedback against the paper. Different papers can influence the feeling, but both the extra fine and fine nib have noticeable vibratory feedback. You know, that <sighs> slightly scratching feeling, while the medium and broad nibs just glide over the page. If you're the type of person who likes the vibratory feedback in hand, definitely go with extra fine or fine. If you like the feeling of a smooth, zero vibration glide, medium and broad are the way to go. I happen to like both. For drawing and shapes, I like the smooth glide, but for writing, especially the types of writing that I do, which are typically notes and short bursts of thoughts in point form, I like that haptic feedback, almost feeling like I'm really etching these important words onto the page. I'll take my hands away and zoom in a bit so you can see the net result for all four stacked together on this one page. Next up, changing up the inks. Now I won't go through a cartridge change of the same color since from the initial setup you know how to load a new cartridge in. If you're using a different colored cartridge or using other inks with an ink converter, the first step is to clean and flush the ink channel feed and nib. This right here is the Lamy ink converter which allows you to use your favorite non-Lamy cartridge inks. When you order them, they just come loose with no packaging, so don't think you were sold a used one. Sometimes I've ordered them, they've literally come truly loose like this. Other times they come in a small plastic baggie, and other times still, they'll come in a little envelope. But going back to cleaning and flushing the channel, feed, and nib, I keep a converter specifically and exclusively for this purpose. Again, it's a good idea to perform a clean and flush any time you want to use a different colored ink, regardless of whether it's a different colored Lamy cartridge or a bottled ink. The ink converter operates using a screw piston mechanism. Take a look. As I twist the red end counterclockwise, the black piston extends downwards, pushing the contents, which right now is just air, outwards. And when I twist clockwise, it retracts upwards, sucking contents inwards. So I take two small ramekins or espresso cups or whatever small vessel you have and fill one up with water. Unscrew the barrel of the Savannah Green Pen's grip, pull out the empty cartridge carefully to dispose, and replace it with my empty cleaning ink converter. Dip the nib of the pen into the water and twist the red end of the converter counterclockwise to suck water in, then shift over to the other cup and twist the red end clockwise to push the inky water out. I'll repeat this as many times as needed until it's just clear water shooting out, and it's typically four or five times that does the trick for me. Give everything a wipe down and time to show you how to load with custom ink. But just a quick FII before that. All of Lamy's pens are tested in factory with that standard blue ink, so if you intend on using custom inks instead of the cartridge right away, you should definitely do a clean and flush first, since there's likely still some of that residual test ink in the ink channel. Today, I'll be using this green teal ink by Pilot called Co Ro. I love this ink, and to show you its color profile, unscrew the lid, and I'll just cotton swab a blob onto this page of my notebook. To load the ink, aim, press, and load an ink converter onto the grip of the pen. Make sure you've turned the red end of the ink converter all the way counterclockwise to ensure the piston is all the way down. 
Dip the nib into the ink, making sure not to submerge the grip so you can avoid an annoying wipe down later, and twist the red end of the converter clockwise slowly to suck the ink up. Now sometimes because of science reasons, my unscientific self can't explain, nothing happens on the first go. Just twist the piston back down and give it another go. As long as the nib stays submerged, you can do this a few times until the entire cavity of the converter is filled. Carefully remove the nib from the ink bottle with a paper towel ready to do a wipe down. Once that's taken care of, you can screw the barrel back onto the threaded grip, and just like that, you're good to go. And unlike a cartridge where you need to let that gravity do its thing for a bit, you can start writing immediately since the ink itself was pulled upwards through the nib and has completely saturated the feed and ink channel already. We're good to give it a go, but before we do, just a quick note on paper. You can't really use fountain pens on all papers. Oh, sorry, I mean you can, but cheaper papers, especially those found in notebooks designed for students or standard legal pads most offices use will bleed and feather. Bleeding is, of course, being able to see the ink clearly on the other side of the sheet, while feathering is that undesirable micro-branching out of ink as you write. Me personally, I use Traveler's Company's notebooks, and their MD paper is ideal for fountain pens, but there are boatloads of companies. This is just to say that regular printer paper or your big box office supplies notebook likely doesn't have a paper quality high enough for use with fountain pens to yield desired results. But back to the test of this new ink. Yep, everything works as planned, and man, I love this color. With my everyday carry notebook, I use two different colored inks since I draw quite a lot of process maps and flowcharts, so having two contrasting ink colors helps with visual cues. I also loaded the Terra Red Medium Nib Pen with this brown ink called Tsukushi, which you can see blotted right next to that cotton-swapped green sample from earlier. Again, if you're interested in picking up a Lamy Safari, I've linked them in the description below for you to check out for yourself. But before you buy, maybe you can hold off and enter to win both of these black safaris, one matte textured and one smooth glossy, both with a medium-sized nib. Entering the giveaway draw is super simple. Head on over to my Instagram at Maurice Moves and comment whether you prefer the glossy or matte version on this photo. You do not have to follow me. I repeat, you do not have to follow my Instagram if you don't want to. Just comment either glossy or matte on this photo since I'm so curious which one most people prefer. This will be a super fast entry window of less than a week, with entries closing at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday, February 25th, 2022, and the winner announced on the next video I upload to this channel. I will pay for shipping anywhere on planet Earth, but depending on where you live and your government's trade agreements with Canada, where I am, import taxes might be levied, which will be your responsibility to pay if you win. Oh, and by the way, if you liked this video, I think you'll love these ones right over here. If you got some value, please hit that like button because that one little tap or click really helps out my channel a ton. And if you got lots of value, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you'll be notified of future videos and giveaways just like this one. But regardless, thanks so much for kicking it with me, and I'll catch you in the next video.